A lot of people are feeling a sense of burnout these days. Burnout happens when our brains are exposed to high levels of stress stimuli. It can be a job, a boss, or taxing work conditions. Stressors at home or in relationships can be incredibly impactful in creating debilitating stress that we sometimes can't escape. Personal stressors have the most influence on our overall physical and emotional state. Most people are unaware of the levels of stimuli and stress they endure on a daily basis. We've become used to it. In a lot of cases, it's a way of life, a never-ending cycle. It isn't until it starts to impact our ability to perform in our daily lives that we notice or even acknowledge that there's a problem. Even then, most people are unable to change it because their brain is literally trapped in an endless chemical cycle. Simply stated, burnout is limbic system disorder, which is a chemical process in the brain that can have an impact on your mental health as well as your physical health. It can cause problems with cognition, memory, mood changes, temperament, sensitivity to light and sound, impaired mental performance, exhaustion, disinterest, depression, not to mention heart problems, weight gain, high blood pressure, and a myriad of other physical manifestations that even move into systemic diseases. I've been researching this topic because it's a problem that I've dealt with personally. My memory, cognition, and ability to formulate thoughts properly were impacted by traumatic, ongoing personal stressors. Years, or even decades of traumatic stress, can have severe impacts for your overall health and well-being. Some of the research I've found explains how stress literally changes the structure of our brain. A neurologist by the name of Ivanka Savic at the Department of Women and Children's Health at the Karolinska Institute confirmed that brains of individuals suffering from burnout don't just function differently. Their very structure may change. She used a burnout inventory to measure participants' degree of burnout and took MRI-based measurements of cortical thickness, studying the amygdala and the anterior cingular cortex and she measured medial prefrontal cortex volumes to gauge the physical toll of stress. The results suggest that the emotional turmoil of burnout leaves a signature mark in these brain structures. The frontal cortex, an area essential to cognitive thinking, begins to thin as part of the normal aging process, but patients suffering from burnout showed more pronounced thinning in the medial prefrontal cortex compared with the other controls. The normal effects of aging were also more prominent in the scans of the burnout group. Other brain structures also showed signs of wear and tear. Burnout patients appeared to have larger amygdalae and shrinking in the caudate, which correlated with their perceptions of their stressors. Savick theorizes that overactivation in the amygdala leads to impaired modulation of the medial prefrontal cortex regions, which then trigger further stimulation of the amygdala, leading to even more activation of the medial prefrontal cortex. It's an ongoing cycle, and as the cycle spirals further out of control over time, neural structures begin to show signs of wear and tear, which lead to cortical thinning as well as difficulties with memory, attention, and management of emotion. In collaboration with another team of Karolinska Institute stress researchers, Savick and colleagues concluded that long-term occupational stress was also linked with significant reductions in gray matter volumes in the hippocampus and the basal ganglia. These structures are known to be susceptible to neurotoxic changes arising from the excessive release of glutamate. Data from animal experiments show that stress causes an enhanced release of glutamate and that a stress-related elevation of extracellular glutamate levels induces reaction in stress-targeted regions of the brain. Neuroimaging studies of people who have experienced severe early life trauma have revealed that their brains show similar patterns to the brains of people suffering from clinical burnout. 
regardless of the underlying cause, evidence is accumulating to suggest that neurological circuits can be damaged by both situations of extreme trauma and by accumulated everyday stress. Burnout also leads to turmoil within the regulation of the body's neuroendocrine system. The hypothalamic pituitary adrenal HPA axis is an important component in the regulation of the stress response controlling the release of the stress hormone cortisol. Under normal circumstances, when we perceive a threat, whether it be a real threat or a perceived one, a rush of cortisol is released into the body. Once released into the bloodstream, Cortisol triggers potent reactions throughout the entire body, ranging from cardiovascular activity to the immune system and memory formation. Once the threat is passed, cortisol levels fall off and these systems return to baseline levels. However, when stress becomes chronic, as in the case of burnout, the body fails to return to normal, leading to a cascade of potential health problems. Under conditions of prolonged stress, the HPA axis ceases to produce higher than normal levels of cortisol. When cortisol levels remain too high for too long, the body responds by eventually downshifting cortisol production to abnormally low levels, a state called hypocortisolism. These abnormally low levels of cortisol are associated with severe stress and trauma as though the body's stress response system itself has been burned out. Additional research suggests that hypocortisolism induces low-grade inflammation throughout the body, which in turn contributes to severe health problems, including buildup of plaque in the coronary arteries. One study of nearly 9,000 employed adults found that burnout was a significant risk factor for developing coronary heart disease, which can lead to heart attacks. The team of researchers led by Sharon Toker, head of the Organizational Behavior Department of Tel Aviv University in Israel, tracked the routine health screenings of 8,838 employees for an average of 3.4 years. They found that employees who scored in the top 20% on the burnout scale at a baseline had a 79% increased risk of being diagnosed with coronary heart disease over the course of the study. Coronary heart disease is the most common type of heart disease. It kills hundreds of thousands of people each year in the United States alone. But in recent years, extenuating factors have impacted those numbers and caused a rise in coronary heart disease. Although public health efforts to prevent heart disease most often focus on lifestyle factors such as diet and exercise, the stresses of a grinding workday may be just as detrimental as lighting up a cigarette or gobbling down a greasy cheeseburger. So you can practice meditation, eat all the right foods, and be the most popular kid in class. But if you don't control the stress in your life, you may not be able to heal the burnout you're experiencing. The first question to ask yourself is, what is making me feel burned out? Some of you knew the answer before I even finished my statement. You may be dealing with stress and trauma every day in your lives. You can probably point to it directly and call it by name. Others of you may not be able to pinpoint why you feel this way. It's okay. Believe it or not, a lot of people don't know why they feel this way. Sometimes it's hard to target for a variety of reasons. For some, it could have been a past trauma that changed the structure of your brain and the way it responds. It may be that the stressor is no longer present, but you're still experiencing the effects of it even years later. With the panic-demic and the wave of jabs that ensued, many people are experiencing limbic dysfunction that is manifested through mental and physical health in a variety of ways. Frankly, the trauma from the experience alone was enough to jam up any limbic system. You could experience burnout from any number of things that you can imagine. Students experience burnout that affects their performance. Parents burn out trying to take care of themselves and their families. Professionals experience burnout regularly as a result of overworking themselves. Regular consumption of alcoholic beverages, pharmaceuticals, or street drugs can cause extreme limbic dysfunction. 
high-stress jobs, constant fighting, conflict, and criticism can cause imbalance in the limbic system that manifests in cycles of self-destructive behavior that can lead to limbic cycle loops. And that's where your brain falls into a loop of reactions and imbalanced responses, similar to what Professor Savick discovered in her research. Remember that burnout is a limbic system disorder. Identifying the cause is the absolute first step in changing your response. I recommend you watch my video, Balance Your Health by Balancing Your Limbic System. I'll leave a link for that at the end of the video. But if you're worried about the impact your circumstances have had on your limbic system, there are ways to fix the damage that has been done. There are several studies on the brain that prove new neural connections can be created to change the way the brain is structured and to improve its performance. Even in cases where brain tissue was lost or removed, the brain makes up for the loss by creating new neural connections. Changing the brain can be difficult. It requires more dedication than most people realize. It means making fundamental changes to your life that for some may feel impossible. It means being constantly mindful of your reactions and retraining yourself to manage how your brain responds in any given situation. The truth is we can't delegate the situations that arise in our lives. Some situations are triggers for the limbic reaction that happens in your brain. So we have to balance the system and retrain the brain how to respond the way in which we desire. Some technology has come forward with regard to physically training the brain. Neural feedback is a technology that teaches clients how to manage their brain behavior. Through the use of electrodes placed on the scalp, the neural feedback machine maps the client's brain activity while they watch imagery on a television screen. The client has the ability to control the volume and screen size through the implementation of their thoughts through the electrodes. The neural feedback machine measures the brain's response to the imagery, then sets an acceptable range of brain activity. The magic happens when the client begins to have a reaction to the scene on the telly that moves out of the acceptable range. The sound and imagery on the screen will begin to fade away at this point. The client must control their mental response to the stimuli in order to get the screen to reappear. I think this technology could really offer a tangible way to change our mental responses to stimuli. It's like going to the gym, but for your brain. I love that. For those of us who don't have access to a neurofeedback machine, we have to do it the old-fashioned way. By controlling the stressors, when and where we can, and maintaining our brain's response to situations that may arise. Repairing damage and creating new neural connections can happen over time. Burnout or limbic system dysfunction can take time, patience, and awareness to fully heal. So be gentle with yourself. I hope this video helped you in some way. You can show support for the channel by clicking the red subscribe button below. Hit the bell if you'd like to receive notifications when I release new videos. Come back on Sundays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. for new content. Thank you for watching. Take care.